All right, we're gonna go out and take some from the audience. All right, guys, like I said, I'll come tap you. Uh, we're gonna go with Superman first, because I know you've been wanting to ask questions. I'm gonna come and pick four more of you, and we'll go through order with you. Why don't they ask you a question that I don't know the answer to? I'm <laughs> so embarrassed. Don't, don't embarrass me, any no, of you. Don't you dare. All right. Good dreaming. She's going to go do it personally. Do you want me to start now? I finally get a pretty girl to sit near me, and she gets a job where she runs to the audience. Mr. Stanley, I think I speak for all of us when I say thank you for not writing novels. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, my, my question is... Uh, of all the um, of all the characters that you've created, and then seen them adapted to the film or for television, which one do you think is the is the most accurate to your original idea? That 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 character on the screen is is really captures the spirit and essence of what you wrote into a comic book. I think most of them have caught the spirit we were looking for when we created these scripts. I think Iron Man certainly was the Iron Man that I had in mind. Spider-Man, when that came out, it couldn't have been closer to what I wanted. The Fantastic Four, the first movie of the FF, I was disappointed in, because I didn't like the way they did the villain, Dr. Doom. Um, let's see, what else? Was, the Avengers are wonderful. And wait till you see some of the new ones. Pretty soon, you'll be seeing the Black Panther. <laughs> and by the hoary hosts of Hoggoth, you'll be seeing Dr. Strange. <laughs> and we're trying to figure out how to do the Inhumans. So you've got a lot of treats in store for you. Thank you, sir. Hi, Mr. Lee. Uh, thank you for my childhood, first off. You're a legend. Yeah. You're very welcome. Send me money. <laughs> <laughs> Were you aware that the first Iron Man film was made in a collaborative process very similar to the patented Marvel method? They went in a, with a very loose script, and the entire team helped improvise their lines in the story. Are you proud of the fact that the Marvel Cinematic Universe and the comic universe shared creative origins? It took him 10 minutes to ask it, and you, and you translated it in 20 words. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> yeah, I am. I'm very happy the way the movies have turned out. Our competitors aren't. But, <laughs> but it's like Marvel has suddenly become the biggest thing in Hollywood all over the world. I mean, the Marvel movies are probably the biggest, best, most exciting, most successful movies the world has ever known. And that's kind of nice. <laughs> so what, my question is, what do you have, what are you gonna do when you're gone? Like, what, what's gonna happen to Marvel? Wait a minute. Oh. 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 That's, that's not a good question, but oh. <laughs> What? She's asking, what is the world going to be without Stanley? Oh, it'll probably fade away into nothingness. As a matter of fact, when I'm not here anymore, I'll think it has faded away into nothingness. How now they, it, oh, sorry, go ahead. How does it feel to be an influence on all these people? Well, I'm a, are you sure I'm an influence on everyone? There might be an exception here. And if so, I, I'd like to ask him or her to leave. I don't know. I, I, it's, I can't believe it, one thing. I, it, sometimes I have to pinch myself. But if it's true that I have been any sort of an influence, I hope it was a good influence. And if so, I am indescribably proud and happy. And I don't know how to make that funny. I, I can only say that seriously. If 
He didn't remind me of things. I never know what to say. But I did an interview here earlier, and the girl asked me, what makes Stan Lee so powerful? Was that the word? And I said, my fans. Because without the fans in this business, you're nothing. So if you're wondering why I'm being so nice to you, even when some of you don't deserve it, <laughs> it's because you're incredibly important to anybody who's in this business. And I got to tell you, I'm the luckiest guy in the world because I think I have the best fans that anybody ever had. <laughs> of course, Obviously, I deserve them. Hi, hi, Stan. In the movies, which was your favorite cameo and why? My favorite cameo? Well, I kind of like the one in the Avengers where um, Thor was trying to was drinking a very strong drink and said, "I shouldn't drink it." And I said, "Ah, come on, give it to me." And I drank it. And then in the next scene, two guys are holding me up. And I'm going, Excelsior. <laughs> I thought that was me. Thank you. But there's a new one coming up. Which movie is it? Is it here? No, what's the name of it? <laughs> yeah, the new X-Men movie. I have, I have a cameo different than any other cameo because I have it with a guest star. Yeah. <laughs> He's so afraid I'll tell, because then he'll get in trouble. But anyway, I think you may get a kick out of that. Don't, don't miss X-Men. Oh, by the way, the director of X-Men, Brian Singer, was here yesterday. I don't know if he's still here today, but I gotta tell you, he is one of the most talented guys in Hollywood. When he directs a movie, boy, you better go to see it. The nicest guy in the world. So I, he's working on a new movie now that has nothing to do with Marvel, but he told me about it. The first thing I said is, what about my cameo? <laughs> but we'll see, we'll talk about that later. I want to play hard to get. <laughs> Sir, where did you get the idea for the X-Men and did you originally create them to destroy racial prejudice? I didn't create them to destroy racial prejudice, but once I had them going, it occurred to me, man, this strip makes a great vehicle to talk about racial prejudice and how terrible it is. But in the beginning, all I wanted, I wanted to get a new team of heroes. We had the Fantastic Four, and I wanted another team. Now, the toughest thing in superherodom is when you want to make up a new character. Blah, 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 blah. We don't care. Let's listen to Stan. Well, anyway, the toughest thing when you try to dream up a new superhero character or characters is what is their origin? How did they get that way? And I figured I already had somebody bitten by a radioactive spider. I had some guys affected by cosmic rays, by gamma rays. By the way, I wouldn't know a gamma ray if it, if it was in front of me. I don't know what these things are. They just sound good, and I call them that. But anyhow, I was trying to think. I want a new group of characters with new superpowers, but how did they get them? And then inspiration struck. What if they were just born that way? Then I wouldn't have to explain anything. And I'm a pretty lazy guy. That would make it easy to write, not much writing. So I figured that was it. I just called them mutants. And it was so easy. And then when we had the mutants, and I had Magneto as the head of the evil mutants, 
Oh, I kind of like Magneto. He's not that evil. There's a reason that he's the way he is. But anyway, I said to myself, after we already had the script going, I said, this would be a great way to show how terrible racial prejudice is. So I did try to put a little of that theme in. And Brian Singer did it even better in the movie. And that's where we are now. And uh, what you, you've heard it here officially. You're very lucky. And I want you to remember this date, because this is when you heard how the X-Men were created. Man, what a big thing. <laughs> Nobody ever asked me how Irving Corbush was created. Half yeah, of the people don't know who Irving Corbush is of that. Anyway, next question, if there is one. Wait a minute, do I see an empty seat? I'm leaving. If, if there's an empty seat. Okay, I'll stay. Hi, Stan. Hi. Because I hate to answer that because it exposes a weakness in me, and I like you all to think I'm perfect. But I have the world's worst memory, and I have trouble remembering the names of people, even people that I've created in print. And I figured if I give them the same letter for their first name and last name, if I can remember one of the names, I know that the other name begins with the same letter. And that gives me a clue. It makes it easier for me to remember. So if I could think of Banner, Banner, Bruce Banner, that's what, you know. It made it easy for me, because I'm a lazy guy with a lousy memory, and uh, boy, the more I talk up here, I realize I'm riddled with faults. Well, believe it or not, my power, I've been asked that question before, and the answer I always give is, I think the greatest power in the world would be to have luck. Because think about it, if you're lucky, nothing could hurt you or harm you or nothing would ever be bad. If somebody tries to shoot you, the shot misses because you're lucky. Whatever happens, it doesn't hurt you because you're too lucky. So you might say to yourself, if you're the type of person who talks to yourself, you might say, well, why hasn't Stan done a superhero called Mr. Luck or something? And the reason is, I've never been able to figure out how to get a costume that represents luck. If I were lucky, what, what kind of costume would I wear? And it's too big a challenge. But I do have, as I told you, that uh, television show that will be out next year called Stan Lee's Mr. Lucky and you might get a kick out of seeing that and remembering the talk that we had here. See I like to position things here that you can think about later so that you won't forget me once I've left. I don't mean left forever, I mean Stanley has left the house. <laughs> Me and Elvis Presley. Where okay. did I miss face? Okay, so first off, thank you very much, Stanley, for coming all the way down to Honolulu. Um, but I have You're welcome. You. So, uh, sir, you've, at, you've uh, contributed so much to the comic book world by creating so many characters that we've all fallen in love with. But there have also been a number of other characters that many other creators have made throughout the years as well. If you could choose one comic book character that you didn't create, what one, which character would that have been? Can you remember all that? Two. I'll pick two. Um, I forgot his name. Who's the guy with the big voice? Wolverine <laughs> and Deadpool. Isn't the guy who did that cool here today? Rob Liefeld. Yeah, he's a 
brilliant guy. I think Deadpool is a great character. Wolverine is a great character. I resent the fact that I didn't make them up. <laughs> oh, that's right. Well, I have a cameo in Deadpool. Really? Oh, then it's, it's even better than I thought it is. <laughs> Stan, our next question is from a young girl right here. What's your favorite Marvel character? Oh, probably Spider-Man. <laughs> situation like that depends on who's writing the story. <laughs> if I'm writing the story, I sure feel sorry for Superman. <laughs> but you can make, as a writer, you can make any character win. I could have Irving Forbush speak Superman if I wanted to. But realistically, Superman should be unbeatable because but there's something I don't understand about him, and maybe you can explain this to me. He's from another planet, and the gravity there was very heavy and strong. So when he got down to Earth, the gravity is so light that as Siegel and Schuster wrote, he could leap over tall buildings with a single bounce. Now I can understand that, but would somebody tell me what makes Superman fly? What is his means of propulsion? He just goes like this, and he flies. We would never be that scientifically inaccurate at Marvel. In fact, in fact, I'll give you an example. I wanted Thor to fly. Now, I wasn't going to have him just go like this. I gave him a hammer, and he twirls it around, and he makes it go as fast as a propeller. And then, and it's, it's on his wrist, so he lets go with a hammer, and because he was twirling it so fast, the hammer goes up into the sky, but he's got it on his wrist. So he follows the hammer. So you see, everything I did was purely scientific. Hello, Stan Lee. Hi. Uh, I'm a 12th grade teacher at McKinley High School, and a few weeks ago we were having a discussion about Spider-Man. We were talking about our favorite heroes, and Spider-Man came up because he's the most relatable to teenagers. And we had an interesting topic to discuss what would have happened to Spider-Man had Uncle Ben never died. Oh gosh, that's an interesting question. I'd have had to write the whole strip differently because it was Uncle Ben's death that gave Peter Parker the feeling and it gave him the, the urge to go out and do good for other people because he felt so guilty. He felt in a way responsible for his uncle's death because he wasn't there when he was needed. So to me, that was a very strong motivation to make Peter want to be a real hero. And if his uncle hadn't been um, killed, who knows, he might have turned out to be Doc Ock. <laughs> I love Doc Ock, by the way. Good afternoon. Um, Mr. Stanley, two of the biggest influences in my life are my grandparents, because respectively, they remind me of Richard Pryor and George Carlin. They're incredibly funny, their wit, their humor. You are a notoriously clever person. Where do you find that inspiration in your life? What made you such a funny guy? Is there someone like that in your life? Why am I so clever? I like that guy. Um, I, don't know, I, don't, I don't know how to answer that. 
I finally found a question I can't answer. Why am I so clever? I, I guess because I'm adorable. <laughs> I don't know. Is there someone I, I in your hope life? I am. I hope I am clever. That Is would there be... someone in your life who maybe motivated you or, or kind of gave you that insight to be so funny? Well, I love comedians. I, 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 I don't know if you remember Jack Benny. Yes. He played a guy who was very selfish and always worried about money, very stingy. And I always thought one of the funniest bits I've ever heard on the television or on the radio, Jack Benny was walking down the street and a hold-up man came up from put a gun against him and said, your money or your life? And Benny didn't answer. And the guy said, I said, your money or your life? And Benny finally said, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. <laughs> and I always thought that represented just the kind of personality and nature he had so perfectly. And I, I love humor, and I always tried to put humor in my stories wherever I could. Um, but as far as what made me so clever, I guess I was just born a wonderful human being. I can't fight it. Thank you for your time today. Excelsior.